Do you enjoy a Sunday afternoon ship spotting? Peering through your binoculars as a mammoth marine vessel slowly makes its way across the horizon. Well, here is a treat for you. And you may even discover a few ships to add to your list to be on the lookout for. Ships about to get real. From a monster cruiser with 23 swimming pools on board to some super tankers with their eyes on the biggest of prizes, here are 20 of the biggest ships in the world. Number 20. Oasis of the Seas I don't know if you harbor any strong feelings about cruise ships, but this one is a flipping enormous monster of a vessel. Likely as not, you're either a fan of the massive cruise ship, or you hate these things with a passion. And this one here is the biggest of them all, along with her sister ship, the Allure of the Seas. The Royal Caribbean International Oasis of the Seas is as big as a city. She can carry 5,400 passengers and a crew of 2,100. This is a mighty big boat. With 16 decks that are wired up with enough electrical cable to stretch from one coast of the United States to the other, this place is like nothing you could have conceived in your wildest of dreams. In fact, the people that designed it must surely have been enjoying a little liquid lubrication offshore leave because this cannot be the work of a regular sober mind. The Oasis of the Seas contains 20 restaurants, 5 swimming pools, and an ice rink, along with a casino a spa, two theaters, numerous bars, and entertainment options. It has its own onboard bakery where 4,000 bread rolls are baked every hour, and the ship consumes 110,231 pounds of ice cubes every day. Just imagine how many pina coladas that is. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Knock Nevis, the world's largest ship ever. As a retro contender for the biggest ship ever, the Nok Nevis was a Norwegian super tanker and measured a lengthy 1,504 feet long and 226 feet wide, which is longer than the Empire State Building is tall, and that's apparently made her the largest ship in the world. The Nok Nevis was built between 1979 and 1981, and her colossal size was the equivalent of four soccer fields laid end to end on her deck. And something that big? Well, it takes a really long time to perform any kind of maneuver. Stopping? Well, you were looking at a five and a half mile stretch to do the most basic of moves. As for turning, you could just about manage to turn within two miles. She had a storied existence, to be honest. Way back in 1986, the ship was hit by missiles that were flying about in the Iran-Iraq war, and she sank. Now you'd imagine that would spell the end, but no, the wreck was purchased by a Norwegian ship owner and she was refloated and repaired and then docked in Singapore. She then went through a series of improbable names including the Happy Giant and changed hands multiple times, ultimately winding up as scrap in 2010. But her anchor sits in front of the Maritime Museum in Hong Kong, quiet memorial to this behemoth of a boat. Number 18. Emma Maersk Container Ship Next up, another container ship. It really is so very exciting over here at the Banana, isn't it? Bear with us because there are some whoppers yet to come. This sizable ship can carry 11,000 20-foot containers. That, my friends, is a staggering 1,400 more containers than any other comparable container vessel and enough cargo space for 528 million bananas. Well, in theory, anyway. But the Emma Maersk almost didn't make it into the water. During the final phase of construction, the ship caught on fire and it quickly spread through the accommodation area, 
and the extremely expensive bridge. It was visible from miles away, but somehow a particularly skilled group of firefighters and crew managed to extinguish the flames and save the ship. This mighty ship is known as the Emma Maersk and is owned, surprise surprise, by the Danish shipping giant AP Muller Maersk and they really go in for these big boats in Denmark for some reason. Probably some residual Viking stuff, no doubt. And the National Bank of Denmark actually issued a special coin with the ship on it in 2011. Well, whatever floats your boat. Number 17. Symphony of the Seas Taking over the title of largest passenger ship ever built, the mammoth Symphony of the Seas is another of Royal Caribbean's colossal offerings to the cruising world. She measures 1,188 feet and is five times the size of the Titanic, so that's nice, I suppose. However, the mention of the doomed ship on board the newly crowned biggest ship seems tasteless somehow, but perhaps I'm being a little sensitive. I still can't get the blue-lipped Leo out of my mind as he sank beneath the waves. Oh, Jack, come back to me. Anyway, moving swiftly on, this thing is obscenely large. Like, seriously, it's a leviathan of epic proportions. The designers of the Symphony of the Seas really created a ship storm with this one. It can carry nearly 9,000 people, which is rather a lot, isn't it? There are no less than 23 pools. That's right, 23. But then again, how else are you going to accommodate 9,000 people? The ship contains 40 restaurants, how many towns have that many? And then there's all that other entertainment that's on board, like water slides and jacuzzis and two full-size theaters, along with a surf simulator, two climbing walls, an ice rink, a mini golf, a casino, a gym, laser tag, a zip line, a massive slide, and all the shopping opportunities you could imagine. Oh, and there's also a uh, flipping fairground carousel. This here is some really crazy ship. Number 16. Battleus, the third biggest ship in the world. And now for your eyeballs, another big old pile of ship. This time a proper massive tanker from the 1970s. We are really spoiling you now, aren't we? The Battleus class tankers were designed for transporting enormous quantities of oil. The very first one that was constructed went by the name Battleus and was officially the third biggest ship in the world. In shipping, being the third biggest is still something to boast about, I suppose. At any moment, your bigger rivals could come a cropper and wind up wrecked, which would move you up in the rankings. The contracts for these mega ships were signed in 1971, and then during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, there was a sudden and sharp drop in the supply of oil, known as the oil shock. This would cast doubt over the future of the tanker project, as its future was a bit wobbly for those colossal ships for a moment. But of course, the oil industry wasn't about to be put off by a little blip in the supply chain, and soon it had its network up and running again fueling all those gas-guzzling industries well into the future, as we are all well aware of. Anyways, the Battleus would be built for the French sector of the Shell Oil Company all the way back in 1976, and trundled around the oceans of the world delivering crude oil to all the fossil fuel thirsty industries throughout the 70s and 80s. She was then decommissioned in 1983 and finally scrapped in 1985. Number 15. QMAX Ships Belonging to the Qatari oil shipping giant Qatar Gas, all these QMAX ships are flipping massive and alleged to have a bunch of properties that make them safer and friendlier to the marine environment as well. Whatever could possibly go wrong? These ships are LNG carriers, that's liquid natural gas to most of us who aren't fossil fuel aficionados, and they purport to carry almost a million cubic feet of the stuff. So that's quite a lot. As well as having a capacious interior, these big boats are big on the outside as well. They measure over 1,130 feet long and 180 feet wide. 
As is fashionable, especially in industries which cause a good deal of pollution by their very existence, these ships like to make a big old song and dance about their eco-credentials. The irony just seems to be lost on them. They claim that their unique construction, using silicone, is designed to ensure the safety and protection of the marine environment. As well as this lofty assertion, they say that these vessels are equipped with state-of-the-art systems that make them faster but also reduce their noxious emissions. Okay then, I'm sure they absolutely are not full of ship. Number 14. Queen Mary II the luxury canard vessel, the Queen Mary II, is the largest ocean liner ever built, and she's one of the last of the great posh old ladies of the sea. As cruise travel is more and more dominated by massive floating cities with entertainment and 24-hour party lifestyles leading the charge, these classic-style ocean liners seem to be of a bygone era. Compared to the Goliaths of the industry, the Queen Mary II has a smaller capacity of just 2,695 passengers and 1,253 officers and crew. But that doesn't mean this is a small ship. She's a prodigious figure with elegant style and an appearance that seems to give a nod to the golden age of ocean voyaging, while keeping up to date with all the comforts of a contemporary five-star hotel experience. Queen Mary II took her maiden voyage back in 2004 and was the first major ocean liner to be built since the Queen Elizabeth II all the way back in 1969. She's the major transatlantic liner making the voyage between Southampton in the UK and New York, but she's not shy of taking the odd cruise throughout the calendar as well. Number 13. Freedom of the Seas Another of Royal Caribbean's crazy mammoth cruise ships, this time from the early 2000s. When she launched back in 2006, the ship was the largest passenger vessel on the sea, but there's a big competition for that coveted top spot and always a larger lady waiting in the wings to swoop in for the prize. She was quickly overtaken by her sister ships in the following years, and yet more RC monsters just keep taking the accolade. The Freedom of the Seas measures over 1,100 feet in length and 183 feet in width, and she travels at a cruising speed of 21 1.6 knots, accommodating 5,730 people. That's a whole bunch of dinner rolls, but nothing compared to the newest offerings from this most extreme of cruise companies. At the time of her launch, the Freedom of the Seas was considered state-of-the-art and had all the facilities to go with that particular boast. A promenade, shops galore, multiple restaurants, a library, and many bars as well as a theater, various clubs, and an ice rink. There was even a dedicated sports deck which featured mini golf, basketball, volleyball, and a climbing wall with the ship's fully equipped gym taking pride of place. The thing is though, Royal Caribbean just keep on outdoing themselves with their own additions and outlandish design features so their previously luxurious ships seem outdated and under-equipped when compared to their most recent offerings to the ocean-loving vacationer. All that constant upgrading must be a real pain in the boat. Number 12. USS Enterprise CVN-65 Aircraft Carrier No, I'm not talking about the Star Trek vessel. Sorry, this is a flipping enormous aircraft carrier that was commissioned by the United States Navy in 1961. It was then believed to be the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and was the most massive of warships on active service in the entire world. Of course, this was an American warship so it would be the biggest one, right? And they beat the ship out of the opposition with this one. Going by the nickname Big E, this Colossus was the only ship of its class. She measured in at 1,123 feet and had a flight deck area of 4.47 acres, along with a hangar bay of 5 acres. The ship was fitted with a total of four aircraft elevators and had the ability to both launch and recover aircraft simultaneously, which is a super useful thing in the midst of combat. Between 1979 and 1982, the ship was totally refitted, and although she was only designed to have a service life of 25 years, 
This massive vessel enjoyed a long career in the Navy thanks to being properly maintained and cared for. Big E was finally decommissioned in 2017 and is undergoing the process of dismantling and disposal, which is due to be completed by the year 2025. Number 11. The Berg Stahl here we have a gigantic ship that used to hold the thoroughly thrilling title as both the largest and longest iron ore carrier in the whole wide world. What a big one! With the capacity of 365,000 deadweight tons, this immense beast of a boat would lumber back and forth between Ponta de Madeira in Brazil and Rotterdam in the Netherlands, heaped with boring old but dreadfully useful iron ore. It would make this journey every five weeks, such is the demand for such stuff, and given the enormous scale of the ship, there are actually very few routes and ports which are actually suitable for her. In all of Europe, for example, only Rotterdam is large enough to accommodate her enormous, girthy mass. When she arrives, fully laden with so much heavy cargo, it takes a full four out of five days to unload it all before she can set sail again, back to repeat her endless trudging task between Latin America and Northern Europe. A distinctly laborious and repetitive existence, no fairy tale ending for this old lady. Number 10. The Vale Brazil And here we have the bigger boat that snatched old Bergstahl's crown. The Vale Brazil is officially the biggest iron ore carrier in the whole entire world. Such a glowing title. No wonder the ship is blushing with delight at the honor of it all. Launched in 2011, the ship quickly whipped the old order into shape and set about showing everyone else up with a capacity of 400,000 tons in her 1,187 foot length. Uh, just that press guy, only downbound opposing. She is a big boobied Bertha indeed. And this Colossus is not alone. No, she was simply the first of seven ships of the same class ordered by big shipping giant Vale from a shipyard in South Korea. The cost of the fleet totaling an obscene $748 million. There must be a pretty penny in that iron ore stuff then. But Vale didn't stop there. Not content with the seven massive record-busting boats, they then ordered another 12 ships of 400,000 ton capacity from a Chinese shipyard for the bargain price of $1.6 billion. The bills for these vessels must be as long as the ships themselves. Number 9. The Thai class supertankers, the Fantastic Four. Oh, just look at what I have for you now. A lovely selection of no less than four big ships. And they aren't just any old rowboats either. These are ultra-large crewed carriers, or ULCCs, and they've been giving the marine oil cargo industry all kinds of special feelings ever since they were created back in the day. The TI stands for Tanker International, which is a consortium dealer of oil tankers, of course. These big ships are known, in the extremely limited circles of tanker enthusiasts and marine industry nerds, as the Fantastic Four. Those boat people really know how to have fun and party, don't they? These mighty vessels are what is called dual-hulled ships. Their advocates claim that this makes the transportation of crude oil into a much safer thing. They allege that this special feature helps to prevent a major environmental problem in the event of an incident. They can travel at 16 and a half knots and are fitted with a hull that's intended to reflect back sunlight. And they also have ballast tanks, which contain inert gases. That's supposed to help prevent the buildup and leakage of any other other gases, because nobody wants leaky gas trouble. That would just be an embarrassment. Number 8. CSCL Globe This is officially the largest container ship in the world. The Hong Kong registered China Shipping Container Lines Company CSCL Globe measures 1,313 feet long and it can carry a hefty load of 19,000 standard containers. By our banana gauge, that equals around 745 million bananas. 
apparently. The CSCL Globe set sail on its maiden voyage back in late 2014 and has dominated the Container Ship Bigness Awards ever since. This monster-sized vessel has the equivalent weight of 14 and a half thousand London buses and has the length of 1,312 feet or as long as four soccer pitches. So it's quite a long one then. Given just how many containers are heaped onto these absolutely gigantic vessels, it's no wonder that every once in a while the occasional container does meet with an accident and ends its existence in Davy Jones' locker. It's especially interesting when the contents of those capsized containers tip out into the water and causes all sorts of kerfuffles. Despite the millions of containers that are transported all over the world every year, only around 1,000 of them wind up in the water never to be seen again. And out of that many, it's really just a drop in the ocean. Number 7. Club Med 2 Yet another one of the biggest passenger ships in the world, the Club Med 2 is a sizable ship to say the least. She's one of the two largest sailing ships in the world. Club Med was founded in France in 1950, and it still has some fairly sturdy European roots, so a good deal of the passengers on board this massive cruise ship tend to be French-speaking, and the general culture of the ship is catering to a European crowd. It's a fancy French kind of atmosphere, with a focus on being active, which includes facilities for water sports and fitness, as well as a spa with all the wellness stuff you can shake an Ayurvedic stick at. Aside from all the onboard frilliness, this ship cuts an imposing figure on the Mediterranean horizon. It boasts 26,000 square feet of space and sports five super fancy masts, which make it stand out from the crowd of regular colossal cruise liners. Club Med 2 is powered by a sailing ship and diesel electric combo that uses its five computer controlled sails and its four diesel generators that power its two electric motors to elegantly cruise around the Med with a distinctive style. Ooh la la. Number 6. HMM Achasidas. In the seemingly interminable quest to become crown biggest container ship in the whole wide world, here comes the latest to allegedly grab the crown. I'm struggling to keep up with this big boat boasting business, aren't you? Owned by a South Korean shipping company named HMM, the Achasidas is now in the coveted pole position in the ship size wars. This colossal container vessel can apparently stack up a silly number of standard containers. They claim that the HMM can carry 24,000 of those flipping things. This is getting into insane banana territory. If you can work out how many bananas that equals, let me know in the comments below, because these sums are boggling my mind. At 400 meters long, which is 1,312 feet, along with 61 meters wide, this is a blooming big boat. And again, it's trickier to offer safe harbor to these colossal vessels. In Europe, it's again in Rotterdam with a 20 meter deep harbor, just about the only port that's comfortable enough to receive such a sizable length. Oh my. Number five, Prelude FLNG. This is a floating liquefied natural gas facility or FLNG rather than a regular kind of ship. In fact, this thing at 488 meters long is around 88 meters longer than the largest ship, so that's pretty impressive. Then there are a whole load of other features that make this thing crazy big and supersized all over. From its mahusive square footage to its 6,700 horsepower thrusters, which are all the things that put the facility into position, this FLNG is about as big as a floating boat-like thing can get. The Prelude FLNG is expected to have a production capacity of about 3.6 million metric tons every year, and if you don't know, that's a whole lot. It has a storage facility within it, and that's where the liquefied natural gas is kept until a big tanker comes along to collect it, probably one of the giants I've already talked about in my list. But the storage on the FLNG can hold the same amount of liquid as 175 Olympic-sized swimming pools, 
When this big vessel is fully loaded, she can displace more than 600,000 tons, which is five times more than an aircraft carrier. Ah, she's such a big girl. Number 4. CMA CGM Von Humboldt here we have yet another container ship that claims to be up there with all the very biggest of big old fat ships in the world. This one goes by the decidedly less than catchy name of CMA CGM von Humboldt. That makes it sound like a very severe and disciplinarian headmaster, but it's actually named for a great explorer. Alexander von Humboldt was a German explorer from the 18th and 19th centuries who traveled extensively across the Americas. The other ships in the planned fleet were also due to receive names of famous explorers, so that's a jolly nod to the past. Built in 2013, this large vessel sails under the flag of Malta, measuring a distinctly wide 53.6 meters and a lengthy 396 meters. This ship also has a standard shipping container capacity that's up there with some of the others on our list, but still falls short of the very biggest. She can haul around 16,020 standard containers, which is not too shabby. Close, boat no cigar. Number 3. Maersk MC Kenny Mahler Well, what a treat. Another container ship. And it's a Danish one. And it's another from the shipping giant Maersk. This is just too much. We're really being spoiled with all of this stuff, aren't we? Named for the shipping magnet Maersk McKinney Mahler, who was CEO of the company from the year 1965 until 93, passing away in 2012. May he rest in peace. However, his ship trundles on, lugging his legacy around the world, and with as many as a full load of 18,270 standard shipping containers on board, it has a substantial deck. It was the first ship of 20 which were produced that has identical features. Oh no, how can I keep up with all the bananas and containers conundrum now? This is just too many. Help me out over here and tell me how many bananas would fit on one of these things. For the love of Mike, I just have to know. Upon completion, the ship was believed to be not only the biggest, but also the most efficient of all container ships that were in operation. She measured 1,309 feet long and could travel at 23 knots at an extremely, allegedly, fuel efficient rate. Now, as we already know, however, there's always a usurper lurking around waiting to steal the title away. So who knows which ship is the rightful owner right now? Did you keep up to date with all of this knowledge? Do you know your ship? Number 2. Esso Atlantic The Esso Atlantic and her sister ship, the Esso Pacific, were in service between the years 1977 and 2002. This extra large lady was in a class all her own when it came to weight. Only seven ships have ever surpassed the half million ton mark in terms of dead weight, and the Esso Atlantic, along with her sister, were two of them. These ships were 1,333.89 feet in length and 102.43 feet in depth. The Esso Atlantic's gross tonnage was 235,000 tons, and the deadweight capacity was a colossal 508,628 tons. She would be so heavy and large when fully laden that it was completely impossible for her to navigate several of the world's waterways. The English Channel? Well, that was a no-go. The Panama Canal? Impossible. And as for the Suez Canal? Well, that was a complete non-starter. Now, we've seen in recent years what happens when that particular passageway gets clogged up by a ship that's been poorly navigated. Everything in the supply chain goes all to heck and causes a shipload of issues across the world. Number 1. Pierre Guillemot Last but not least, we have yet another contender for the third biggest ship in the entire history of the entire world. This ship was named for the French politician and oil industry mogul Pierre Guillemot. 
This was indeed a flipping massive super tanker built in the 1970s, as so many massive tankers seem to have been. It must have been the fashion, along with flares and chest wigs. She was 1,360 feet long, having a deadweight tonnage capacity of 555,000 tons, traveling at a slow, ambling 16 knots. As another ship that was simply too large to travel through either the Suez or the Panama Canal, her uses were slight, even if her stature was not. This Colossus of Oceans was such a pain in the boat to run, costing insane amounts of cash on account of her obscene size, that she was only in service for six years. There are only a very limited bunch of roles that a gigantic tanker can perform, so once she proved herself unprofitable, the biggest sin there is, of course. Well, she was not long for this world and faced the chop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this half hour's roll around in ship. Are you a fan of the mega cruise ship? Or do you prefer to figure out the banana capacity of a container ship as it traverses the horizon? Let me know your ship stories in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.